born in Hidalgo, Texas, September 22nd, 1988. The U.S.-Mexico border and the small town of Hidalgo, Texas. And I was the first boy of the family. A place that's far removed from 30-year-old Marcus Gata's life. That's me in second grade, I think. In distance and time. I think all of us are required to take a second grade picture that looks something like that. His family moved to Minnesota when he was just one. Yeah, so this is my mom and me and my sister. But when the federal government sent him a letter denying his application for a passport and challenging his citizenship. For them to claim that I'm not American is the biggest insult that I have ever heard. The future for this avid hunter, marine veteran, and tax-paying Minnesota resident suddenly hinged on what happened here three decades ago. At his home in southwest Minnesota, Iskeda is deciding his next steps in the fight to prove he's an American. I spent my life trying to prove myself that I do belong here. He agreed to sit down with us despite a struggle with speaking. Oh, yes. <laughs> and an aversion to the spotlight. This is really the last place I want to be. Iskeda is one of many born to midwives in the sprawling Rio Grande Valley where access to doctors and hospitals can be limited. But in a 2009 lawsuit, the feds say some midwives admitted to falsely filing U.S. birth records for parents who brought their babies across the border from Mexico. There's the U.S. flag there. So. Right, that's helpful. Despite having a U.S. birth certificate and even serving tours of duty in Iraq and Afghanistan with the Marines, the government says Iskeda's citizenship is suspect. Because of the area where I was born and in the time frame that I was born, that they suspect of fraudulent births. Twice the government refused to grant him a passport even after he sent in additional evidence including secret clearance from the military. In this letter the director of the State Department called Escada's birth attendant not reliable and the documentation Escada provided not sufficient to prove he was born on the U.S. side of the border. They were basically saying we don't really think you were born here. Yes. To get answers, All electronic device. five investigates flew to Texas. We drove more than 400 miles across the state in search of Marcus Gata's original birth records. On this morning, along the border near Hidalgo, a breakthrough. Oh, see? Our producer, Ana Lastra, tracked down the midwife who says he delivered Escada 30 years ago. How many babies have you delivered? Quantos babies have entregado? In Terry. Uh, 30 años, 30 years, and maybe 5,000. Roberto Nunez showed us he keeps records of every one of those births. Wow. Here in this tiny office in these files. Here. 88. Here are the records. This is it. Baby number 430, 7 pounds, 7 ounces, Mark Gilbert Escada. Proof. Like that. You have the proof. Yeah. So we'll get a copy and we'll make sure he sees it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mark, these belong to you. So these are the actual ones? Those are the records. Wow. <laughs> I had never had um, that any doubt that I actually was born there, so... But I'm glad that this shows more. Yeah. Delivering babies, including Escada, just one mile from the border, Nunez says he knew there could be questions. Even in 1988, he had a Hidalgo police officer sign off on Escada's birth record. To this day, this midwife says he asked police to witness births at his clinic to verify their legitimacy. I'm star. He says he's provided records to hundreds of people who needed extra proof of their citizenship. No todos, somos. But the government continues to challenge passport applications from those born here. The line between Mexico and the border, everybody. They, they are targeting everybody. Everybody's under suspicion? Yeah. Even you? Yeah. Everybody uh, under the name midwife? Ah. Oh. Now you're suspicious? Yeah. The Inspector General's Office overseeing Health and Human Services here in Texas called fraudulent birth certificates a common occurrence. No one would go on camera to speak with us about it, but they conceded they can't prove some cases one way or the other. In a weekly basis, probably have 10 people that walk into my office you know, with, that, with those problems. Jaime Diaz is an immigration attorney in Brownsville, Texas. 
Since the U.S. started requiring proof of citizenship to cross the border in 2009, prove me something. Diaz says he's helped more than 500 people get passports. Then there is approximately 150 that I have had to file the lawsuit. And how many of those have you won? I won all of them except one. Diaz and advocates say a better understanding of the Mexican-American culture in border towns like these could help reduce the number of legitimate U.S. citizens who are denied passports. We're talking about you were denying somebody the right that he was born with. It should be an apology. For Marcus Gata, vindication could begin with the records we found in South Texas and brought back to Minnesota. I was born here. I, I'm, I am an American. I, I, I deserve the same rights as everyone else.